Gentleman from Washington, Mr. Heck, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It may be Valentine's Day, but I rise today to share a story of a Christmas miracle. Now, this is little Gracie, and little Gracie was born on Christmas Day in 2015. Unfortunately, not too long after she was born, she was diagnosed with a respiratory virus. It's a very bad thing for little people because they have little, little lungs and little respiratory airways, and frankly, it can be extremely dangerous. Uh, to make matters worse, she was snowed in at the hospital sh where she was born. She had to spend five days at the NICU before they could transport her to a children's hospital. And when she finally did arrive at Seattle Children's Hospital, she had pneumonia and E. coli and a collapsed lung. But fortunately, little Gracie's a fighter, as was her medical team, and she made a complete and full recovery. With coverage through Medicaid, her parents were able to focus on her care and her future. And the financial stress of hospital bills that come with intensive care, a cardiac center, a catheter rather, a life flight, and numerous medications, that was daunting. But it was not devastating. Gracie's story is just one example of the difference Medicaid expansion through the ACA has made for millions of children throughout our nation. And Mr. Speaker, when I'm home, I hear these stories all day long about how the ACA has made a real difference in the lives of people. The ACA in my state expanded coverage to more than 750,000 people. In fact, this January we hit record enrollment of 225,000 sign up. That's a 13% jump from last year. The ACA is working for many people across America. But let's be honest, we've also heard the other stories from people who aren't seeing these gains. Instead, they're seeing higher premiums and increased medical costs in general with little improvement in coverage. Those are legitimate concerns that Congress needs to adjust. But look, whenever Congress makes major changes, Social Security or Medicare, enacts big ideas, there will always be unexpected results in parts of the program that don't function as anticipated or designed. Our job's to follow up, see what works, and adapt accordingly going forward. Even the best laws are going to require some adjustment. Let's do that. Let's do it the smart way, the American way. Work together to fix the parts of the ACA that need fixing while maintaining that which works. Repeal and replace is not the answer. It's not the answer. Working together to fix it is the answer. And as we continue, I hope, or begin, I hope, to work together, I hope we will remember Gracie and know that health care is not a miracle. Health care is the result of hardworking doctors and nurses and health care professionals in a financially viable health care system and our actions here that support that in Congress. You know, we all come here for lots of reasons philosophy, values, ideology. We come here to represent our districts, their major components. I have the privilege to represent Joint Base lewis mccord the largest force projection base on the West Coast. Many thousands of state employees. I have the state capital who work every day to elevate the human condition of their friends and neighbors. We come here to represent the 672,554 people of our districts. Mostly, I hope, however, that we come here to represent the Gracies of our districts. What I believe deep in my soul is that if we will keep Gracie and the Gracies of our district in our hearts and foremost in our minds, if we keep them as our touchstone and our North Star, then America's going to be all right. I plead with you to do just that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields.